and uh, let me invite the next speaker, Dan Oyon. He's a senior scientist at the Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel. And he'll be talking about patterned multi-photon photo activation in scattering tissue by temporal focusing. Thank you. So my name is Dan. I'm from the Weizmann Institute. And today I'd like to tell you uh, a bit about uh, the tools we are developing for, uh, for the use of nonlinear optical uh, excitation patterns for photo activation, uh, neuron photo activation uh, purposes. So there was already a, quite a good introduction. So there was already quite a good introduction to optogenetics in, in two talks ago. And the idea behind this um, work that I'm presenting is to photoactivate neurons uh, one at a time, or to photoactivate a very small subset inside an intact tissue which contains neurons which are genetically identical. So they all express channel rhodopsin. So let's say we want to photoactivate this single neuron. We want to activate this single neuron, uh, and we want to use channel rhodopsin 2, which is usually activated by blue light. Um, and consider this schematic of photoactivation with blue light. What you see is that you have two problems. The first is that you suffer from loss of axial confinement because blue light is present both above and below the uh, neuron that you want to excite. The second is that you suffer from scattering. Now scattering, even if you focus your light down into uh, a region covered by a single neuron, scattering inside tissue, and tissue is turbid, would broaden the response so that you have a a wider region inside the sample which would be photoactivated. Now, let's see how we can deal with these two problems one at a time. So the technique of choice in order to deal with axial confinement is the use of two-photon photoactivation. In two-photon photoactivation, you basically absorb two photons, near-infrared photons, simultaneously in order to generate the excitation of channel rhodopsin and because the excitation probability scales with a peak in intensity rather than with the average intensity, this leads to axial confinement. Now, axial confinement is very good for small excitation areas, but if you consider a Gaussian light beam, the axial confinement, the degree of axial confinement is actually proportional to the excitation area. So if you want to excite the full area of a neuron, you're gonna have a problem. You're gonna have too low an axial resolution. So, there is a solution to that, which is, for example, to scan a small spot on the, on the neuron, but this sort of limits your time resolution. A much better solution would be to disentangle the lateral resolution from the axial resolution. And several years ago, we come up with a technique of temporal focusing, which does exactly that. So in order to understand what temporal focusing really is about, Let's first consider why two-photon works for spatial focusing, which is depicted in the top part of this uh, image. So for spatial focusing, the pulse duration, which is typically 100 femtoseconds or so, is obviously fixed, and the area is minimal at the focus. Now, if you consider the integrated two-photon photoactivation or two-photon excitation signal, it is proportional for each Z section, inversely proportional to the area and inversely proportional to the pulse duration. So obviously, in, for spatial focusing, you photo excite by two photon where the area is smallest. Now, if you could generate a device where instead of modulating the area, you modulate the pulse duration as a function of propagation into the sample, such that the pulse is long as it enters the sample, becomes shorter and shorter, reaches its shortest at the focal plane, and then becomes longer, this would also confine photo excitation, two-photon photo excitation to a single plane, but now this 
degree of confinement has nothing to do with the excitation area. So the setup to perform this is actually surprisingly simple. It's a variation on the 4F grading compressor introduced by Oscar Martinez over 25 years ago and basically includes a diffraction grading which is imaged using a tube lens and a microscope objective into the sample. So it's basically a modified 4F system. And your ultra sharp pulse, which impinges up upon the grating at an angle, is split such that each color of, of the, each constituent color is diffracted towards a slightly different direction, goes into the sample at a slightly different angle, and this leads to dispersion of geometrical origin, which does exactly temporal focusing. So this was first applied to wide field multi-photon microscopy rather than scanning multi-photon microscopy, which is axially resolved. And shortly after that, it was applied for optogenetics, taking advantage of a very nice feature. Because this is an imaging setup, whichever excitation pattern you, sh you shine upon the grating would be conveyed to the image plane, so into the sample, and you get that excitation pattern, but still maintain the axial, confi <coughs> the axial confinement. So now what, what about scattering? When light is transmitted through turbid tissue, patterns or excitation uh, regions uh, are distorted. So if we look after 500 microns, this nice shape of a neuron is completely converted into a speckle pattern. And it's very difficult now to photo excite a neuron with this uh, speckle pattern because you're not sure exactly where the peaks of the speckle would go. Now, there are solutions for this. Adaptive optics um, can correct for sample-induced distortion, but adaptive optics is slow. You have to learn the sample or the, the degree of scattering, the scattering matrix of the sample, and so it's slow and sample specific. You have to relearn every, at every different location inside the sample what the scattering of the sample is. What you really want is a robust sample independent solution, which uh, independent of the exact position inside the sample would give you more or less a smooth pattern. So let's try, see what happens when you pass temporally focused light through this turbid tissue. And this is uh, an image measured after 500 microns of propagation through a brain slice. And what you can see in that image is that, except for a slight smearing of fine features, the image is completely maintained. And it's maintained in a very smooth pattern, smooth fashion. So where's the magic in, in the way that you can convey images or transmit images through scattering samples with temporal focusing. To, do, to understand this, we have to reconsider what exactly the temporal focusing setup does. What we have is we have different colors, which are, because the different frequency, mutually incoherent. And each of them impinges upon the sample at a different direction. Now, when you have those colors, different colors, go through a scattering tissue, the colors, if the colors arrive at very different angles from one another, each of them generates an uncorrelated speckle pattern. So you have multiple speckle patterns for the different colors, but those are not correlated. If two colors propagate very small uh, angle of incidence relative to one another, they pass more or less the same turbid tissue, and so they generate correlated speckle patterns, which are spatially shifted because of the different propagation angle, what is known as the memory effect. And this is a simulation of exactly this. You have a desired shape. Every color gives a random speckle pattern, but the coherent summation of all these colors gives a smooth, uh, a, a significantly smooth um, excitation pattern with some anisotropic smoothing due to the memory effect. What is nice is because of these two processes depend differently on the excitation beam size, smoothing is actually independent of the excitation shape or size, and the axial resolution is maintained even inside scattering tissue. So overall, what we, we could do with this technique 
is get back to what we wanted to do in the first place, which is to excite a single neuron inside a scattering tissue. So here, we, we generate an illumination shape denoted by these circles, and we excite through, and through a slice which is more than 200 microns thick of nerve tissue, of brain, of brain tissue. And as you can see, when we excite on a neuron, we get every time an action potential and we get significant depolarization. When we excite in the close vicinity of the neuron, we hardly ever get an action potential and we get significantly reduced depolarization. So finally, we've learned a few things, new things about temporal focusing, um, which is inherently robust against scattering, basically can let you transmit an image through a scattering tissue, and that optogenetic activation of single neurons in intact slices is a reality. So finally, I want to thank my collaborators, especially the group of Valentina Emiliani and Université Paris-Descartes, and funding and you for your attention.